All right, everyone, another Steam Next Fest is here, and uh, this is always a great opportunity for us to all get excited about some forthcoming video games. And what I've done is I've spent the last few days playing a bunch of the demos that are available, and I've selected what I think are the pick of the bunch, my favourites, the ones that you can wish list with my stamp of approval and hope that when they do finally get released, that they're still pretty good. Always a risk these days. But anyway, I hope you like this new intro as well. This is something I'm going to try using moving forward. Um, but anyway, that's by the by. Let's see some of the games. First up is a game that has actually been in Nextfest before, but it returns with a longer and much more polished demo. Iron Meat is a fairly solid Contra clone, now with a two-level demo that gives you a good indicator of how Contra this really is. As the name implies, the alien enemies in Iron Meat are horrific mixes of flesh and steel, with big chunks of meat taking over vehicles like cars and trains. It's proper Tetsuo the Iron Man body horror stuff. It looks cool and the pixel artwork is of a very high standard. Uh, other than that, it's basically identical to Contra 3 and that game is wicked, so so is this. A game that is a test of your ability to parry enemy attacks. Bloodless casts you as an ex-samurai who does not wish to shed unnecessary blood. So by carefully timing your dash attack with the enemy attack, you can disarm them and win the encounters. It's pretty simple. You unlock new abilities as you go, allowing you to spec your character towards your strengths or of course to mitigate any weaknesses that you might have and in the process you gain new moves. That can help you whittle down an opponent's endurance so you can land that disarming blow. It's a cool idea, it feels rewarding when you win a big scrap and it has a really unique art style that is a little bit like a game running on some kind of fictional super-powered <coughs> ZX Spectrum. Look, I was a C64 kid and old rivalries die hard, alright? Look, if Nintendo aren't going to give me a new F-Zero X, then this is going to have to scratch that itch for me. That very specific N64 F-Zero X itch. The best of the F-Zero games, in case you were wondering. This nails almost all the elements of that classic Nintendo racing game, and adds a few sections where you can fly around, which are quite cool except for the risk reward around your ability to sacrifice health for boosts. Now they're two separate meters, which means there's two separate stations where you can replenish them, and it means that boosting is much safer, and this actually shapes your race strategy somewhat, and I'm not sure if I'm 100% on board with it yet. I have had my eye on this one for a while, and it is looking better and better every time I see it, so let's hope it sticks the landing as it approaches the finish line. And while we're on the subject of N64 futuristic racing games, while Aero GPX does a damn fine job of aping F-Zero X, Death Grip does equally as good a job borrowing from Star Wars Episode 1 Racer, aka the one good thing to come out of Star Wars Episode 1 that isn't called Darth Maul. It's fast as fuck, it's white knuckle stuff, and the, the sense of speed and danger when you're pelting along at full pace, it's genuinely thrilling. With the only real downside I've found so far is that aesthetically speaking, I am finding it a little dull. But other than that, Dev Grip looks like it is going to be a real winner and nails the concept that it sets out to achieve pretty much perfectly. Alright, so this is probably the pick of the bunch here for me. I've actually played this hollow body demo before, but it felt a little bit more refined and polished this time out, which might just be my brain playing tricks on me, but either way. I do feel like pointing this one out to anyone who isn't already aware of it. Hollow Body is a really cool Silent Hill style survival horror game that riffs on the first two games in that legendary series and has absolutely nailed the Silent Hill vibe, but also transplanted it into a truly unique setting. It's some kind of fucking futuristic post-apocalyptic English inner city estate. And I've never seen anyone try anything like that before, and perhaps because I bloody live there, the contrast between the extremely familiar and the utterly unknowable makes me feel constantly on edge while playing it. They nailed it. It's properly good horror here. And I still can't get my head around the fact that this is made by one person, and I can't wait until I get it finished. This year, apparently. Ten of this ends up being better than the Silent Hill 2 remake. <laughs>
Tales of Lost Ages Volume 1 is a little collection of mini dungeon crawler adventures with a wonderful PS1 meets... How would I, how could I describe this? Like It's like miniature diorama? Like a PS1 meets miniature diorama style aesthetic. It's got a sprinkling of dungeon synth over the top and that completes what I found to be a really fun, simple, but surprisingly engaging little game, which tasks you with some timing-based combat and some basic platforming and puzzle solving. It's very enjoyable, but certainly elevated by how charming the whole thing is. It's very much up my street, but I reckon it could be up some of yours too. I've really gotten into pinball proper over the last few years, so no surprises, I had a really good time with Pinball Spire, a game that merges RPG, puzzle and Metroidvania elements with console pinball games like Devil's Crush, Sonic's Pinball and the brilliant Kirby's Pinball Land. And it's a lot like that, that title there. Uh, you're essentially trying to solve the board, I guess, uh, find ways to progress, like hitting a bunch of switches that will open a door, for instance. Uh, in the demo you also unlock a uh, skill and ability and this one allows you to slow down time but also shows you your trajectory when you're on the flippers which is very useful no doubt. Um, but it also got me thinking about what other abilities that you could get that could be cool and that means that the game's got me on the hook and definitely check this one out if you're a fan of any of the things I have used to describe this one. <laughs> I mean, do I really have to say anything about Victory Heat Rally while this footage plays? I mean, look at it. Look at the colours, listen to the sound, look at those power slides and boosts that you get when you finish them. Alright, imagine you've got the controller in your hand. You approach the corner, you hold down A or X depending on your pad to begin the slide and you turn into it. And you begin charging that slide meter at the side of the screen. Then, as soon as you're out the corner, you release it all and you will straighten up instantly and boost forward. Satisfying controller rumble, giving you the right level of feedback the entire time. You can already feel that, can't you? You can already feel exactly what it's going to be like in the hand. And that's the sign of a good power slide. And this game has one. And that's all it really needs. Sign me up. It's a pretty simple one, this one. It's a first-person endless runner with the unique, wait for it, twist in that you can rotate the path in 90 degree increments. So you can make panels above and to either side of you your path. There's a boost to smash through and a slide to slip under certain obstacles and a cool rail sequence at the end of each segment to test your reaction times. It's simple, fiendishly difficult, has a rad aesthetic and is properly compulsive. It has that proper one more go thing going for it. I can't wait to see the full game in this one so I can crank the difficulty and speed up and see what bloody well happens. Finally, Dungeons and Degenerate Gamblers, a game that seems destined to ride the Bellatro wave of success as another game that combines traditional card gambling games with the complexities of a deck builder. This one requires you to play blackjack instead of RPG battles and conversations, but after every one of those, you get a fancy new card with abilities that can enhance your deck. But also every few rounds you have to bin off one of your decks, so you can't get too comfortable with your setup and have to go with the flow a bit. It's very good, and someone on my Steam friends list has played this for over three hours already. Very good. Alright everyone, as always, thanks for watching the video. It's time I started saying those things I say at the end of every video. You know it by now. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the video and want more videos, subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you want to support the channel, best place to go is the Patreon address that you see on screen right now. Two bucks a month, you'll get access to a bunch of archive stuff that I've got up there. And also the top secret Discord where we can all talk shit together. There's a little community. You're welcome to join it. You know what to do. Anyway, see you next time.